Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shweta Anand and welcome back to my channel Simplified Dentistry. In today's video, let's have a look on the classification and the functions of oral mucosa. I have already made videos about the structure of oral mucosa and keratinized and non-keratinized oral epithelium, so you can also watch those videos. So as already discussed, the oral mucosa is the tissue lining the oral cavity. And histologically and functionally, it can be classified into three categories. First is masticatory mucosa. Second is specialized mucosa. And third is lining mucosa. Now let's know in detail about each mucosa. First, let's have a look on the masticatory mucosa. So as the name suggests, this mucosa is present in the region which aids in mastication. It includes the gingiva and the hard palate. It is bound to the bone and it does not stretch. It occupies 25% of the total oral mucosa. Usually, it is keratinized to withstand the forces of mastication. That is, it bears the forces generated when the food is chewed. Second is specialized mucosa or sensory mucosa. It is known as sensory mucosa as it bears the taste buds which have a sensory function. It covers the dorsum of the tongue specifically in the regions of the taste buds on the lingual papillae. It occupies 15% of the oral cavity. Although it is a masticatory mucosa by function, but due to its high extensibility and lingual papillae, it is classified as specialized mucosa. Third is lining mucosa or reflecting mucosa. So it covers the remainder of the oral cavity, which includes the buccal mucosa, labial mucosa, alveolar mucosa, mucosa lining the ventral surface of the tongue, floor of the mouth and soft palate. So overall it makes up all the surfaces of the mouth except for the dorsum of the tongue and the masticatory mucosa. It occupies 60% of total mucosa. It is non-keratinized, soft and pliable. It does not function in mastication as it is not equally exposed to masticatory forces and therefore has minimal attrition. However, it covers the musculature and is distensible, adapting itself to the contraction and relaxation of cheeks, lips and tongue and also to the movements of the mandible produced by the muscles of mastication. Now based on the superficial layer structure, the oral mucosa is classified into two categories. One is keratinized mucosa and the second is non-keratinized mucosa. I have already made a detailed video on the keratinized and non-keratinized mucosa of the oral epithelium. So you can watch that video in order to know in detail about the keratinized and non-keratinized mucosa. I'll mention its link in the description box. Okay. So the keratinized mucosa is present in the masticatory mucosa, specialized mucosa and the vermilion zone, whereas the non-keratinized mucosa is present in the lining mucosa. The oral mucosa has many important functions. So now let's have a look on the functions of oral mucosa. So the first is defense. The oral cavity is an ideal incubator as it harbors a wide variety of organisms. But the oral mucosa is impermeable to microorganisms as well as to the bacterial toxins and this is because of the epithelial integrity that is intactness of the oral epithelium which offers an effective barrier for the entry of the microorganisms. It also secretes antibodies and has an efficient humoral and cell mediated immunity. So we can say that the oral epithelium functions as a physical and an immune barrier to external aggressions 
and prevents the penetration of the oral cavities normal bacterial flora that may cause infection the second important function is lubrication so the oral cavity has got both major as well as minor salivary glands the minor salivary glands are present throughout the oral mucous membrane and the secretion of salivary glands keep the oral cavity moist and thus prevents the mucosa from drying and cracking thereby ensuring an intact oral epithelium so a moist oral cavity helps in speech mastication swallowing and also in the perception of taste the third one is the sensory function the oral mucosa is richly innervated meaning it is very good at sensing pain touch temperature and taste a number of cranial nerves are involved in sensation in the mouth including trigeminal facial glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves the sensation of taste is a unique sensation felt only in the anterior two-third of the dorsum of the tongue and the reflexes such as swallowing, gagging and thirst are also initiated in the mouth. Now the another main function is protection. So the oral mucosa physically protect the underlying tissues from the mechanical forces resulting from mastication and from abrasive nature of foodstuffs. So the keratinized masticatory mucosa is tightly bound to the hard palate and gingiva and it supports the underlying tissues by resisting the loading forces exerted during mastication. The lining mucosa in the cheeks lips and floor of mouth is mobile to create space when chewing and talking during mastication it allows food to move freely around the mouth and physically protects the underlying tissue from trauma so this was all about the functions of oral mucosa thank you for watching the video and if you want more such content related to dentistry, then please like, share and subscribe to the channel Simplified Dentistry.